Hello and welcome to another edition of Dish It Out. I'm Doug Fee. And I'm Frank Benowitz. And welcome to our, our show. We're going to be making some really good stuff today. I'm excited. I see. Not that we don't always make good stuff, but not yet. <sighs> Coming your way, we're going to show you how to make some delicious pumpkin chili. And? And a wonderful apple cake that uh, we're going to enjoy with... Uh, and it's actually a very adaptable recipe that you can even do with strawberries, depending on the time of year, with different fruits. So um, I think you're going to like what you see, so stick around. time to play and uh, we get to make our pumpkin chili. Oh, I'm feeling a little chilly myself. Well, not for long. We got to crank up some heat here. Now this chili, we're going to let it simmer out for a couple hours, but uh, you don't have to wait that long. But uh, it's going to be time lapse and it's not going to be very hot. I mean, we're actually going to add some, some chili powder and some red pepper flakes, but you can control obviously how much you want to put in there. So to start off, we have, uh, you got us some special beef, didn't you? Uh, I don't know how special it was. I don't know the cow by a first name, but uh, but it is some certified Angus beef, so good quality. See, it looks lovely. I don't know how lovely it looks at raw state, right? It's, it's ground beef, so it'll look better once it's cooked. So if you want to go ahead and toss that in here. Sure. Did you say hours until we eat today? It's okay. Huh. We'll get your candy bar to snack on. Thank you. All right. So we, had, we had a little bit of oil to the pan, and this is uh, this is... Looks like an 80-20 mix, so there's plenty of fat in the meat itself as well. Now, do you usually want to use something that has this high of fat content in it? Well, if you're going to drain out, I, I drain out the fat anyway, so it just doesn't matter. So if I can let it, it's cheaper, that's fine. Um, but you could also do the same recipe with turkey, which is very, very lean. But again, you need to add more oil to the pan. And if you drain out anyway, it just doesn't matter. So you can use whatever you want in here. Any ground meat would do. Exactly. What, what if you're vegetarian, though? If you're vegetarian, then... Tofu? Uh, I don't think I want to. I don't think I want to go there. Tofurkey. Oh, please. I'm hungry for chili. I'm, a, I'm an omnivore. Yeah, I want to say I'm a carnivore, but you know, fifth graders all over the place want to correct me. All right, so we're gonna brown this off, which is the exciting stuff. You get it. Right, it's very exciting. Yeah. What we do have uh, that we already did ahead of time is we actually have some uh, pumpkin seeds that we went ahead and roasted. And uh, just toss them with a, coat them with a little oil, a little salt and pepper, and put them in a the convection oven. And we got it right in the second try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got you got to keep an eye on those. You yeah, know, apparently they, you do. They were they were just about done. You you turn your back, you go away for a minute or two, and That's they it. went past the point of no return. Yes, because we just kept our nose on it, and we could smell it was you know, past done. Yes. So. But luckily, you can see the good ones. Right. And we actually made this recipe in the Food Prep 2 class this semester, and we used uh, Kobe ground beef, which a lot of people say, uh, Kobe, it's very, very expensive. Which, of course, it is if you're using um, a strip steak or a ribeye or filet. But the uh, Kobe ground beef, actually, we were able to purchase for $5.50 a pound. All right. So it didn't, didn't quite break the budget. And, uh, Here's a little prestige on your menu. Absolutely. Kobe beef chili. So one thing that you, you might notice sometimes if your ground beef has been previously frozen, you're going to get a little water in the pan, so you'll see that, but that'll just evaporate off and not, not become too much of an issue. I'd like to make some tacos now. A different chili first. Oh, That's chili. a diff different episode. So while he's cooking off his ground beef, uh, we're going to uh, get ready for our, we already chopped our onions. so. Uh, I didn't have to do that on camera today because I was feeling kind of lazy. That's we right. We an excellent kitchen tool here for chopping onions. Uh, it's called Student. <laughs> we do offer credit and non-credit classes here. So it was one of our credit side students. That was nice enough to chop some onions. So. Absolutely. We have wonderful students here. And, and hopefully people out there will, will join that, uh, that collective unit that we call students and have some fun here and more importantly gain some knowledge and maybe uh, pursue a career in the culinary arts. 
Although, though I, I do have to admit, I do like it when I make students cry. Like, <laughs> I mean, just cutting onions, but you know. Well, that, I don't know why you had to do 50 pounds onions when you only needed uh, less than a pound. I'm just easily amused. So this is this is taking a little while here, but uh, so we're gonna finish uh, brining this off, and when we come back, we'll be done. We'll be back right after this. All right, so we're making some progress here. We're getting browned and. Uh, a little bit of fat floating around in there. It's like the sun is shining on this beef. We don't need all that excess fat. So we, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to utilize that fat because we're going to uh, take out our meat, our brown. You were talking about the beef, beef right? Of course I was. Oh, okay. Excess fat. I wasn't sure if you were looking at me or not. You're going, getting all paranoid on me. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave some of this, uh, this fat in the pan. What we'll do is we'll saute off and caramelize our onions right in the, the same fat. Want to waste anything here? Waste not, want not. Yeah, Somebody so. said that, didn't they? You know, if you, you can be the, the, the best chef on the planet, but if you don't know how to make money, you're kind of useless. So we teach people, you know, you got to wear your chef's hat and your business hat. So which means we don't want to waste anything. Which plus, plus, it's a win-win, right? Because you're going to get that nice beef flavor into your onions, and it's true. That, and I'm I'm cheap. I admit it. <laughs> I don't think you're cheap. I think you're frugal. Ah. I've, been, I've been meaning to tell you that for years. I, I'd rather be thrifty. Thrifty. Thrifty, okay. thrifty is acceptable, actually. Okay. You want to get those onions going right in there? Sounds like a plan. All right. Any day now. Oh, sorry. Holding up progress. Thrifty and impatient. I'll let that part out. I'm going to let these caramelize, and what's going on, we're going to drain out the excess fat out of our ground beef here. I'm actually Ooh. going to go ahead and pour this right into our, our pot that we're going to cook our chili in. Now I know there's a, a lot of different events for chili, whether it be competitions or just enjoyment of chili. And we found this pumpkin chili to be very popular this semester with people. It was a very fall related theme that we had for the restaurant. And uh, this tied right in there. It really was, and, and the, uh, of course, we, the students come up with the recipes themselves, which is kind of nice for that class, because we, uh, we don't tell them, okay, here's your recipe, go cook for our restaurant class. It's like, okay, you've got to develop a restaurant. So we start from scratch, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Absolutely. So, so now the sweeter we want to make, you know, we, we want to uh, make our onions, the more we caramelize them and bring out that, that sweetness. But we're going to cheat. We're going to go ahead and add some, uh, some spices here, including sugar. So we are going to sweeten this up just a touch. We teach our students in our food preparation one class when they do their French onion soup that that is not acceptable. You know, they have to cook those down and caramelize it. Exactly. Reduce down that beef stock. Okay. All right. And do you want to add some sugar now or do you yeah. want to add the chili powder? I need, we need to make it smell good in here. So let's, let's start off with uh, some, some chili powder. It's not chili without chili powder, right? Uh, I knew that was coming, unfortunately. Yes. A little smoked paprika. And you like the smoked one uh, as opposed to just the sweet paprika, because especially for chili, for the smokiness aspect? Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, if I want to get some chuck and, and cut it up, and, and you know, or, or smoke it, and then cut it up and use it for my chili, that's more work than I care to do. So we get some smokiness in here this way. Well, it's smelling great with that smoked paprika. And we have the, uh, the oils that are in there to help bring out the flavors of these spices. And what was that, some cumin you that just put some in? some cumin. That's one of my personal favorites. And a little salt. Oh, that's oh a salt chip. Nothing like a good salt chip, right? Is that, is that different than a salt lick? Uh, it kind of is. I'll let us know it's a little moist in here, that's all. Well, we'll stir that up real quick. all going to cook out, and we'll add our sugar. Red pepper flakes. So there's a little background heat oh, wait, there. wait, there's more. All right. Well, we Smell. have all this stuff in the pan. It's all kind of sticking to the pan. What we want to do is raise that up. So we're going to add our, some moisture here from our tomatoes. It's all in one shot. And for these, we used uh, some fire roast tomatoes, yes, right? Yes, indeed we did. And actually, uh, you introduced me to those years ago, and, uh, and I will never go back because, I mean, it's great. It's fantastic. It's an excellent product. You can buy diced, which we did in this case, or, or whole. 
Um, but the, the dice works out very nice in the chili. So we were releasing the fond, what we call the fond off the bottom of the pan, all those, uh, the, that uh, food particles and, and, and goodness is stuck right there. We want to lift that up because we want to actually taste that. We're very fond of the fond. It's all the flavor, right? Yes. All right. I don't know if I'm fond of the puns, but that's a whole other issue. Oh, well. All right. Let's go ahead and, and uh, you want that? put that right into our deep pot here. All right. You're doing it towards me so I can wear it? Absolutely. I already got a few splashes on me. You look I'm good share, that. share the wealth. Okay. Smells very good though. It's better. I think I I think this smells better than even the one we made in food prep too, because we added some uh, cumin to it. Exactly. We'll take I agree. This off we got for some, now. some bay leaf going in there. We're gonna add our uh, dark red kidney beans, and I, I chose to drain these. Okay. And it's up to you whether or not you would want to do that. And last but not least, we got some. Uh, Packed pumpkin here. Wouldn't yeah. be pumpkin chili without the pumpkin. Yeah, that would kind of be false advertising there. So we're going to stir this all together, put this back on the fire, let it simmer out for a little while, let all those flavors blend together. Then we can, get to eat it. I was going to say, I don't know if you can see inside that pot right now, but uh, it's okay if you can't. It doesn't look the most appetizing as of yet, but it's but getting it'll, there. It'll get there. It's getting One of there. the things with this chili that you're not, it is, um, it's on a drier side, and which is, which is, which is fine when you know when we had the end product and we served it. Um, people are used to it a little more, and you can always add you know a, a stock in there, so you can see it's uh, a little dry side. But we yeah. can always add more tomatoes or a little stock. We'll let that simmer out while we're putting together our dessert, and uh, we'll actually we didn't start with dessert today, but we'll finish with dessert. That's all right. Yeah, we got a, a nice apple tart coming up your way. It's almost like, well, it's a cake between a cake and a tart, but it's really good. So stick around. We'll be right back. All right, it is time for dessert. I like to hear that. Well, it's time to make dessert. It's not actually time to eat dessert yet. Ah, oh, such a tease. So, this, uh, this recipe was given to me. It, it was titled as a tart, but it's, it's more of a cake consistency. And it goes together pretty, pretty well, um, and it's pretty simple. You can do it all in one bowl. Of course, I need more, more bowls so we get to wash them later, but very, <laughs> very straightforward. All right, so we got some room temperature butter. All right. And we're going to use our creaming mixing method, which means we're going to add our, our sugar to this. And, and I just want to make sure our butter is soft, which it is. And this is something that you've done for years in uh, the Kids in the Kitchen over the summer. It is. Uh, so it, it's tried and true. We've, we've been doing this recipe for over a dozen years mm -hmm. and uh, always works. It's kind of nice. The one trick I learned, though, is when you're working with kids, you've got to keep them busy. So you know, if you want to keep them really busy, you leave the butter a little on the hard side so they can mix it a little more. <laughs> it keeps them very busy. Yes. All right, so we're going to add in our sugar here. And we're going to just blend them together. And basically, we're looking for like a, almost like a, a peanut butter consistency. And they all, all get blended. You shouldn't see any lumps of just yellow. We want it all to blend in as, as one color. And that creamy method's something that obviously we show the kids, and obviously in baking one class, students would learn here at beautiful Mercer County Community College. Exactly, here in our culinary center. All right, so you can see how difficult that was. Now, this is where I part with my baking instructors because this is more like gorilla baking. We just kind of throw it all together and it works. And so uh, that whole sifting thing, I'm not a fan. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add our, our salt here. Normally we'd sift together all the dry ingredients and I can't be bothered. <laughs> some, some baking powder. Although we do tell them when uh, in the food prep one when they're doing something like waffles or pancakes. You know, Correct. It is a good thing to sift. But so they don't want to over mix it. But for this we know this works without sifting. Exactly. So. And we add a little bit of cinnamon in here. All right. And what this is going to do is we can blend these. So these are uh, some key components, especially our, our chemical leavening. Our baking powder, we want to make sure it's distributed evenly throughout. So we want to kind of spread the wealth here a little bit with that. And now usually in the summer, when strawberries are in season, we do this with strawberries, but in the fall, apples are in season. And apples and cinnamon, I mean, that's like a natural mix. It is indeed. So you see it almost does look like peanut butter here. Mm -hmm. So now it looks so good, we're going to make it look not so good. We're going to add a couple eggs to it. <laughs> And this is why we always tell the kids that, uh, unfortunately, we have to sometimes tell the college students too, you can't eat this dough because it's got raw eggs unless exactly. we're using pasteurized. 
Yeah, a little thing, pesky thing called salmonella. Not a good idea. Of course, we also do teach sanitation here, credit and not credit. So that's another shameless plug. It is indeed, but I found one of the best teaching methods for that class is paranoia. So I'll tell you all the possible things that you could be eating. It's very true. Once you take that class, you'll never look at food the same way again. Yes, ignorance is bliss. So if you're blissful right now, good for you. Okay, we're gonna add our milk in here. All right, not looking so yummy. But the yeah. last thing we're gonna add is our flour. All right. And we don't want to overmix the flour because that forms the glutens, which will make this tough. So we're going to add that last. And I'm going to add about half the flour to start with. And just half the flour so it can absorb it? Exactly. And uh, so it doesn't end up all over the table and, and us. Might make for good television, that's, but that's otherwise, called, yeah. It's called antiquing. And I will pass on that. This batter itself is, very, is going to be very thick. So, it's starting to be work, so I'm going to let you take over. And we're going to add the rest of the flour here. <laughs> All right. And I'm going to... As long as I get to eat it at the end, I'm more than happy to participate. I'm going to utilize my, my knife skills here, and we're going to cut up. i got a couple of uh, Monster Granny Smith apples here. And when using the, the tart apples, they have the higher malic acid level in them, so they're going to uh, not turn to applesauce inside our cake. So they'll actually bake a lot better because of the firmer texture? They will indeed. Plus, uh, it's nice that they're a little tart, too, to balance out some of that sweetness, right? Exactly. And, of course, with this type of uh, dessert, I mean, we could add, like, a, a cinnamon whipped cream, or uh, we can just heat it up and add a little ice cream. Oh. Good stuff. Now you're talking. Yeah. We did that uh, one year. We had uh, apple pie ice cream. We did, indeed. That was very good. Was that, I don't know if that was the year that we had the cinnamon fried chicken thighs. That was one of my favorites. And we do all, all kinds of fun stuff here and great recipes. That's another thing. I don't know if people out there realize that we actually have student-run restaurants that are open for the public, that they can come for a low price and actually enjoy a three-course meal. You need so. only visit our website. Because I think that's, uh, as our freeholders said when they joined us yesterday, they said that's the best-kept secret in Mercer County. So even if you're watching in Maine or South Carolina, hey, what, what better thing to plan a trip to New Jersey and visit Mercer County Community College and they could probably take a non-credit while they're here as well. You know, as long as we're in a neighborhood. Or at least join us for a meal. Okay. This is going to work out to uh, when you dice this up. I don't want to cut the pieces too small. Um, but they are going to cook, cook down just a little bit and shrink up a bit. And when I put these in, it's going to look like I have way too much apple compared to the amount of batter that you have in there. I'm okay with that. Okay. Because this is a, a drier, we, you said tart or cake. It is. So having that uh, water from the, uh, the apples may be nice, right? Exactly. So I got to almost like turn it over so that we get oh. it all coated. Stop that. <laughs> all right. And while you're doing that, I'm going to spray the pan. I got a regular nine inch cake pan here and cut this circle with scissors all by myself. Hey. They let me, uh, let me use scissors today. You weren't running with them, were you? Uh, never, yeah. never. So we're going to spray this, and we're just, I'm going to spray the edge. And when you're utilizing those vegetable sprays, some, some are better than others. Some are more, uh, have a higher moisture content, and that just evaporates out of there. So How's that looking? Want. You're just about there. All right. Just about. I'm gonna, we're going to burn our chili back there, I hope. I'm going to take a look at it in a okay. second. We do have that pumpkin chili going on, too. All good it's stuff. A, it's a very fall day, isn't it? Pumpkin and apples. Yeah. How's that? Is that ready to go in? Yes, indeed. There you go. One big scoop. Not looking like much right now. Mm, looks all right to me. I'm sure it'll look better after it's been in the oven. Okay. Would you like to have yes, the... Indeed. And I'll go check our pumpkin chili back here. Okay. Now with this, you want to put it on your parchment paper. And we want to move this around. And, and although it, it's, it doesn't look it, um, this batter is going to come up around all the apples. And, and cover them all completely. So I'm kind of just using a, a little bit of an up and down motion here to kind of spread them around. And that's it. And this is going to bake in a 350 degree oven. And we'll put it in there for about a half an hour. Um, if I was doing the same recipe and I wanted to use strawberries, what we, what we typically do is we'll make the batter and put the batter in a pan first. Because if you try and stir in the, the strawberries, it makes one 
red kind of mass. Absolutely. So what we'll do is um, we'll cut the uh, strawberries up, and just kind of push them down into the batter. And there we go. So now this is going to go in our 350 degree oven for about a half hour. No, no cinnamon and sugar on top? No need. Mm. We're going to top it later with our, with our wood popping, so we'll be good to go. Excellent. So we're going to pop this in the oven, and through the magic of television, it's going to come out and it'll be done. So we'll see you in just a moment when we're all done. Stay right, stay right where you are. All right. Chili's about done. I knew when I said that you'd be back. Absolutely. Chili's ready. It's been simmering out, and you know, anytime you simmer out your chili, you got to make sure that you, uh, well, the moisture doesn't evaporate out of there and it doesn't scorch. Um, they're going to say taste it. There's that too. Oh. I did taste it, and you know what? It tastes pretty darn good. One of the things we also had to make sure we do is, is look for the bay leaves and take them out of there because it's not fun to, to go chewing on those. Yeah, some people, I think old wives tell people said it was poisonous, but you know, probably just choked to death from it. That's it. Look at the bright side. Yeah. Let's find that silver lining. You're good for that, Frank. I'd try. If you would, please. It's a little bit. They get in there and get a little it's fresh it's parsley. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's twice this twice done pumpkin seed. Okay. There you go. And then One for me? Absolutely. All right. I'm gonna enjoy that. I know that. It smells great. Okay. Speaking of sanitation before, we're using our gloves for our... That's it. Ready to eat foods? Absolutely. Gloves. Absolutely. All right. That's the other beauty about joining us for a meal here. You know that it's prepared in the most sanitary ways possible. Well, that's one of the things we hear from our, our students. We tend to be uh, sanitation zealots here. We're real, really particular about that. As they say, better so, safe than sorry. Exactly. All right, so now I have our, uh, our tart came out here. And you can see it's more of a cake consistency. Uh, we let it cool a little bit. And what I did is I, I took actually a plastic knife. I just go around the outside of the edge. I don't want to take a real knife because it's not good for the knife or the pan. So now it should hopefully just come right out all in one piece. Let's hope so. Let's hope. Uh, uh, oh, uh, oh. There we go. Very nice. Nice work. All right. Let's have our parchment paper here, which we no longer need. Wow, that looks perfect. All right. All right. So now all we have to do is slice it up and serve it. Did you say serve as in we're going to eat? That's exactly it. Oh, thank you. Okay. Use a straight knife to cut this guy up. And do you, want, do you want yours in quarters or eighths? I thought it was halves. Yeah, I had a hunch you might go there. Of course. Okay. I don't know if that's the, uh, the method that uh, Chef Reed or Chef Sherry would show in uh, the baking, but it looks like it's working for you, so go with well, it. Well, right? you know, when we divide this, you know, we do this in, in, typically in camp with kids, we have to divide this into thirds. Exactly. We do the peace sign, right? Exactly. So you want to be as, as precise as you can. Especially with the kids. Yes, because if one piece is bigger than the other, they are going to notice. Yes. So you can see this held together pretty well. You can see that our apples are cooked through and they held their shape. Doesn't look dry either. That's the beauty. No, it isn't. There's plenty of moisture from the apples in there. And when you do this with strawberries, the strawberries tend to shrink up a lot more and mm -hmm. you leave a, like a little pocket of moisture from where, they, where they've been. Well, it tends to be a little drier, this recipe, but I think that works great because if you're having a cup of coffee with it or tea and you have that ice cream on top, exactly. do you really want something that's, uh, that's too moist? Yeah, or in this case, whipped cream. In uh, this case, yes, we're gonna get some cinnamon whipped cream in a second. Exactly, so we're gonna finish plating this up and then we're gonna head to the dining room and we're gonna eat. Eat. All right, now it's time for your favorite part of the show. That's eating. That's it, we get to try the fruits of our labor. And uh, this was a very fall menu, so I'm going to fall into uh, this bowl or this crock pot. I, I know. It doesn't get much corn here. No, actually, it does. That's the shame of it. Some corn would have been nice, actually. So with our, our pumpkin chili here, it's going to have a, it has a nice smoky aroma. Oh, you're using a spoon. Paprika. I'm using a fork. It's like yeah. uh, chunky soup. Only much better. Hmm. Flavors on this all blend together nicely. We simmered this out for about an hour. 
you know, already those, those flavors will develop nicely. Absolutely. The cumin, the, the smoked paprika, the pumpkin is very subtle in the background, and that amount of sugar we added is, is, is just enough to take any bitterness that might have been there and, and makes it go away. That is delicious. Mm. I'm already ready for dessert now. Well, I can eat a few more spoons of those, or forks in my case. After we say good, after, we, after we're done. But you know what? Uh, we did the Kobe beef this semester, and this is the certified Angus beef, which is a lower cost than the, I, I think with the addition of the cumin, it was actually even better, I think. I, I, I agree, and, and, it, and you can see it, it ended up, it's still a fairly, you know, fairly stiff in its consistency, um, but there's plenty of moisture there, so it, it's delicious. Easy, easy to eat. Easy I to could actually put that in a taco shell. You know, I would imagine you could. Well, I, mean, I, I don't know why you'd want to. It'd be delicious. Now we have some uh, cinnamon vanilla whipped cream here. That's what I'm talking about. With our nice warm apple cake. Well, you can talk about it. I'm going to eat it. Got some uh, whipped cream on there. Oh. It's got a wonderful flavor. Um, probably could use, uh, if we didn't have the, the cinnamon and the whipped topping, we probably could use a little more cinnamon in there with the apple, but um, the flavor combinations go together quite well. And now it tastes like some good. chili on top. I feel like I'm watching a tennis match. Well, before we get too carried away here, I want to thank you for joining us on this edition of Dish It Out. Look for us again when we're trying something new and different. Mm, that's new and different. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.